All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the planning board meeting. It is the 14th of August, 7 p.m. roughly. We have with us in the board tonight our town planner, Don Johnson. We have Steve Vitrova, William LePage, and Lou Perrin, and myself, Dan Edmiston, a chairman. First item on the agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes from July 24th. It's the pleasure of the board. Make a motion that we accept the July uh, minutes from the July 24th meeting is submitted. I have a motion to accept the minutes from the 24th of July. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Come on, motion passed. Get some signatures. Second item is a carryover from last meeting, appointment of a delegate of the CMRPC. Uh, Don, there were some questions last week about the, or like two weeks ago, about the availability. What, what kind of time demands did the person have on them? It's a quarterly meeting. Quarterly? And it's, uh, it's a policy setting board, basically. I have a little uh, notation from CMRPC in the book, in tab C, tab okay. D, rather. And the tab B in your notebook. So basically, what, four meetings a year then, and then? Yeah. It's, it's the policy making board for the the Regional Planning Commission, essentially. Um, for some reason, they have a notation on their, on their website that um, Steve Sullivan from Board of Selectmen is the claim board's representative. I don't know how that happened, but I spoke to the town administrator. And he said to, just to vote the planning board's choice and we'll hear at the next Selectmen's meeting. So I don't know what happened there. I we got that message, but nevertheless, so once we get a delegate, will they re will they change that and revise yes. it? Yes, they will. Okay. So I'm here there's going to be a one quarterly meeting, so basically four times a year, and I'm assuming there's going to be a couple meetings uh, with the town of Dudley, either with the Economic Development Committee or here with the board. Possibly. A couple but of those. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a policy making board essentially. But it's, the regional planning commission. Does this sound like anything anyone wants to volunteer for? I don't mind doing it. So there was mention of a. You, you just see a lot of things you about planning. I guess you wouldn't see otherwise. No, I don't mind doing it. See what other communities are doing and things like that. Right, so, one of you guys want to make a motion for have Lou? Yeah, I'll get uh, make a motion. We nominate Lou Perrin. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Another, another little bonus, too. The more you attend, the more money we get from for their... Uh... <laughs> no pressure, though. <laughs> is that, what is that? The, the more, more meetings, meetings you attend? The more meetings you attend, the more money you can bring I'm a good negotiator. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we've used, the, we've used the, um, CMRPC's um, town allocation money for, uh, particularly for updating the zoning map from time to time. A few other little projects here and there. So, very handy. All right, moving on to item C, appointment of the planning board and associate member. Something there from, from us? Actually, what, what happens, I contacted Mark to see if he's, Mark Marziotti, to see if he still wanted to do it. He said he would if we, we, we couldn't find anybody else. It was an emergency, he would, he would consider it, but he really didn't want to be in, you know, in that position anymore. So I call up. Uh, I, well, I talked to Dan, and we decided to maybe call up uh, Russell, uh, who was a former planning board member, and he was, he was right in, but he didn't get the, the uh, votes to be re-elected to the board, so. And I believe after you spoke with him, he did send in an email to you, and uh, I'll read it for the record. Uh, good evening, Dom, Don, excuse me. I would be interested in volunteering on the Town of Dudley Planning Board as an associate member. I feel that I could add value to the planning board in the absence of a member with my past experience on the board. Please let me know what you need from me. Kind regards, Russell Giglio. 
Yeah. So he, as Don said, he was on the board for, I think it was nine months or a year before the June elections. Uh, he was a good member. He was involved. Unfortunately, he didn't, he didn't get enough votes as a write-in, so one of the reasons he, he wanted to be back on the board. So um, to me, it sounds like it's a, a good idea, a good fit. Uh, if anybody's in agreement, we can entertain a motion. Make the motion to appoint him. I have, I've got a motion to uh, appoint Russ Giglio as our associate member. I have a second? Second. All right. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. I think we're going too fast here. All right, moving on to item D. We have an A&R plan. Uh, Barbara Hain is the applicant. Property located at 20 Bonnie View Road. This should all be under item D in your guys' folders. Do you have a plan of this, Don, or? Mm -hmm. Somebody representing the applicant or the applicant himself? Yeah. Okay, can you come on, please? Do you have a sign-in list, Don? Uh, oh, yeah. Put on top. Pardon me? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yep. Well, why don't we take, take a turn and try to find the sign-in sheet there for me? I will find that. Can you just to take a seat up there, right there? Get a sign-in sheet for you? Try to get this all squared away? I got my gavel here. Just one plan there. So you want to just come up and see this piece of it. I'm trying to come out. Turn it. So this isn't in it. This is not in it. This is not in it. This is Take that <coughs> that strip of land to be the neighboring lot. That's all. One lot from the neighboring lot. Apparently, uh, the fence line that isn't what you thought it was, or something good. That's right. Yeah. May I say something? Well, let's, let's, let's let Barbara go first, if you don't mind. Okay. Get the name right. Yep. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Just let us know what you're planning on doing. Or okay. What you'd like to do? I'd just like to have that parcel of property just attached to my deed. The only reason why I wanted to do it, it's like it's something that should have been done years and years ago, but it's like one of those things that you completely forget about until. You know, when Chet started getting ill, all of a sudden, you know, I woke up in the middle of the night one night, and I'm like, oh, crap, I've got to take care of this. Because if, if I die, I know that I'm going to be leaving a mess for the executor of my estate, you know, as to she's going to have a, a mess trying to deal with that one little 15 feet of property. That's the only reason why I'm doing it. It okay. has... It has nothing to do with increasing my property value or I'm not trying to steal land. I mean, it's land that right now, it's mowed. My husband planted um, a fruit orchard up there 25, 30 years ago. We've lived in the house, I've lived in the house for 32 years. My husband passed about two and a half years ago. So, um, I've, I've just, that's, that's the only reason why I just wanted it done. And as a matter of fact, I was at the lawyers having him draw up a paper that Chet would sign just to sign that piece of paper over to me. And when I was there and Mark, Mark Ehrlich, my lawyer, he had it half written up 
and I got the phone call that Jetta died. So that's, that's the only reason why, I mean, if it's, if it's going to cause this much of a heartache, then move the fence, I'll rip up the trees and, you know. So right now your property goes to the line that is with a dimension of 129 is shown. Right. And so who owns that land? You own the land that's in that small little parallelogram area or trapezoid, where the heck it is? The land that you want to add, you own that, the parcel A? I'm, I don't own it, no. That is that is part of the estate of Chet Kalissa. Okay. So I, don't, I don't understand how, did you, he, how you can do that. Did he sell it to you or? No. I mean. Chet was lackadaisical about the boundaries. It's a, it's a, it's a bottom pasture. Uh, he may have been even surprised about that because of the shop depends and found out that there was extra. On other houses there, I know that people have moved the land a bit back, have the sheds near it. Chet was out of neighborliness, never it was no problem. It was uh, it was just unofficial, like okay, no problem, it doesn't bother us. But uh, the gist of it today is, Chet just died. I've just come back from Europe, 25 years over there, and there's six kids. It's going into a trust. The land will go to Audubon. I just found out this morning this was happening. And so I just thought, well, you know, father just died. I got a sister who's dying in the hospital. And no one knew anything about this. And you are then, your name please? My name is John Tierney. I'm a son of Chet Kalissa. Okay, thank you. So we didn't know anything about it. My siblings asked me to come in, find out what's going on. And she's a good neighbor. There's always been a good neighbor. There's no uh, problem there. But this came as a surprise to us, that's all. Has there been a survey done to yes. confirm the boundary? That's the survey. Yes. That's, that is the survey. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hello. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, so a survey has been done to determine that that is the real lot line, or I'm not yeah. have, have, having trouble understanding this. Right. Can okay. you shoot the pens? It's basically uh, she, this, this belongs to Chet's estate. Now, no one's proposing moving the, the fence where to keep the cows in or anything. The usage of it, we're not interested in changing it, but uh, everyone asked me, well, do they want to read the thing? The, the Audubon Society contacted me and said, well, that's a question, and they're going to get involved too. So, because well, that was going to be my next question, was whether or not there's actually a recorded deed for parcel A. If there isn't, doesn't one have to be created before any property could be conveyed to, to her? This is the first step. This just shows the plan that it's <coughs> from one lot to the other. It's just, it's just it's called a land swap. We don't have the authority to, to do a land great swap. Deed. That'd be the between deed owners. the first step. So my father's estate is in, will be in probate for a year, nine months to a year, working soon with the other things going on. So yeah, I just want a few answers, really, what's happening. Do you guys understand this? I, I, are you I opposing am, this? I'm trying to get a clear picture on what, what is your feeling on it? Uh, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. But okay. Everyone asked me, like, no one, has, no one knew about it, so let's give us a chance to reflect on it. My sister, who is uh, the executor of the estate, wants Jane's lawyer to contact our lawyer, George Dresser. Audubon, people said they want to be involved. If something happens, we, if it's if it's eminent domain or something like that, they want to. We be don't involved. have the authority. So, you know, I'm no, it's this nothing to do with that. Either, so either it like shows a subdivision or it doesn't. That's all the ANR plan does. Either it shows us the subdivision, we have to create a street to get uh, access to, so to the land. they're looking for our approval to move forward. You 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 you're just about obligated to approve I'm, this. I'm, I'm still confused. This, in my opinion, if lot one and the property owned by Chester, Calissa, or his estate, if, if this is all one, or one owner but two different lots and you wanted to convey a strip from one lot to another under the same owner, I would have no, no, absolutely problem. no problem with that. But when, I don't even know who the ownership of parcel A is, I can't figure that out. And then how can, how can I take parcel A from you just yeah. because, I, I don't understand. Parcel A would belong to the, uh, the estate. Uh, my, my father's land. So the, uh, there has to be an agreement between her and the estate. Yeah, but that's, this is the first step to do that because you have to show something to present at the registry that shows this is the will happen. That it's, if that they it's, don't do the deed, well, you know, that's shame on them, I guess. 
So, but this is the first step. I, I, just I, showing, I don't object to it. This is just showing whether uh, it's either subdivision or it isn't. That's, that's what it comes down to. I, I, I might add that and since there was neighborliness in the back fences all along the bottom of the road there, uh, I don't care personally. But I know from my brother, he said, there's been sheds and things moved up to the property line and Chet never cared. I've and it's been going across. If you shoot the pens, there's other properties that use land that belongs to Chet. I did, so yeah. we don't want a ripple effect of everyone claiming eminent domain. Yeah, what, to, to follow up on what Lou was just thinking, which is you, you don't object if both parties agree, he's actually not completely, you're not the sole representative of the estate, That's correct? Right. Yes. So we don't know whether or not one of the other. Well, it's not, it's not an issue here. It either shows a subdivision or it doesn't. I'm not trying to be, no. It's the, well, let me ask you this, Don. I guess what I don't understand is why can't, why can't the estate deed this parcel A to her and then have her come and request the A and R? Yes. Uh, request this what them happened. to be combined. That's what happened. She's the applicant. So my sister, who's the, exec uh, the trustee, the main trustee of the thing, tells me that I should just, you know, she's friends with Jane. She said, have Jane's lawyer to contact our lawyer, George Gresham, and they'll figure it out. Can you do that, ma'am? I can do that. Okay, because yeah, I just think it would, because it kind of yeah, it doesn't sound like it doesn't I'm, sound like they're against no, what she's trying to do, but it's, land, it's not. Right. It needs you know, to be handled by attorneys. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's land that I've that we've mowed for the past thirty odd years. I've, you know. I don't think anybody on the board opposes you joining the lots. I just I don't think know. we just want you to have clear title to the lot yeah. that you're asking. You for. know, and it's just because That's I don't want to after this. years down the road when the house goes to get sold after I'm, I've gotten hit by a truck and I'm six feet under hey. that um, you know that I don't want this to be a giant legal mess for my niece. You, we we, you don't, know, we say, don't disagree with that. We think that's, that's we understand what you want to do, and I I I, I don't want to speak for the that, entire board, but I just right, my right, feeling is, is yeah, this is something that should have been done when my husband was still alive. Have you ever made an attempt to approach the owner about purchasing that strip, or or did you not realize that that <laughs> strip wasn't yours? Is that is that I kind of had a feeling it wasn't mine but it's like with <laughs> just i think the fence i think what happened was that the fence line with where the fence line shown here that that was when we bought the house the the realtor originally said your land is from the cow fence down to the road yeah you know, the realtors that, they'll get you every time <laughs> sign so, here <laughs> so just if That's, i so you know. I, my father never had a plan to develop. I was always cow pastures, and he was pretty, uh, you know, a few feet here or there, he didn't really care. Right. And um, it will never be developed. It will go to Audubon eventually, all of the land. So, so if uh, yeah, there was no, uh, the usage of the land, it was never contested. If you, they used the land, apparently no problem. Don, what so are you looking from, for, from us? Are you saying now that you don't, Yeah, if I could quickly just jump in here. I'm, what I'm understanding from the board, if I can try to summarize, guys, is that the board has absolutely nothing against this land being transferred. Okay. We gladly accept an A&R plan that shows that, but in the board's opinion, we want to have some kind of a, an agreement from the property owner that they don't have any concerns with that or that they're deeding it over. But this is an A&R plan, which means approval not required. For us to simply sign off on this without that, we can't put any conditions to this. If this is a plan that required our approval and we could put conditions to it, yes, we approve this under the condition that A, B, C, I think we could go on that right away. But this being an A and R plan, I, I don't yeah. see how we can give, a, we, we can't give approval. We're just accepting it as an A and R and we can't put that to it. And I, I approval no not required. I, I approval have... not required. Right. So yeah, that's what, that's what this is being submitted as. You're just asking us to accept the plan at that. So. Our approval isn't acquired. We have to give a, we have to give um, a couple waivers. It's not it's a couple items that aren't shown in the plan, but it's all no big deal. It's a formal thing. So if you had an agreement, if you could present us with, you could give us a verbal that you and all your siblings are okay with this. 
I think we could sign off on it right away. But without, since you're basically you're, you're representing the owner right now of the land, right. to simply transfer it owner, I, transfer it over, I, I don't know if we can do that. It just it doesn't seem right to me. I mean, I don't know about you. You said you've been on the land for 30 years, and maybe that has some kind of legal context that I'm not aware of. That you've been using it for 30 years without any kind of protest, and, and that's the, land for the lawyers to decide. And then that's, that's exactly what. I got a letter from uh, from uh, Mass Audubon today because I just found out about it. I didn't know anything about it, and uh, Jane had said something about eminent domain. And I I don't know. That's what somebody mentioned to me. Well, that, that's, so, that would be. Uh, yeah. I had no that's that for attorneys want to, to fight they over. They want to be involved. It's a far is, reach. Is, 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 is the board want to read into the law? Do, do you have an attorney that can reach out to their attorney and yeah, yeah, try I to do, Mark sort Rowe. all yeah. this out? I do. Yeah. Say that you're not the owner. If you guys can exchange information. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if you have a deed for lot one, and then you have a second deed for lot parcel A, then we can approve it. Yeah, then, then, then we, don't have, no, we right. don't have any problem the way this but right now, parcel A has a different name on the deed, and lot one has a different name on the deed. All right. You can't combine two different owners on one lot. Right. You, can can't, I write you have on to change this? the deeds. Can I write on you this see, copy? You, have to, you I, approve the lot. Lot lines get changed first by the plan, and then they have to go back and do the deeds. There's no question all right. about that. All right. So, uh, so, all right. So, what do I have to have Mark do? So we we can approve. Mark is your attorney. Yeah. Um, you're, you're saying you're. Your sister's, I'm sorry, I. So, are the attorney for the, uh, the estate, well, the attorney for the estate and the trust yes. is jo uh, George Dresser. And the trustee said <coughs> that her attorney should contact George Dresser about working out the details of this. Right. The trust of the six kids, I'm one of them. I, I just happen to be available in here now. Normally I live in, in, uh, in, in Greece. So. But you're not a trustee. Or, or I, I'm what we're all we have everyone has a vote basically, but okay. there's two administrators with my sister and my brother Ken. Gotcha. All right, so yeah, that's a, I mean, we're not here to give legal advice, but I would reach out to attorney dresser, have your attorney reach out to attorney dresser, see whether or not you can get this parcel deeded over to you and go from there. Okay, okay. who is the landowner of the trust? Yes. And eventually, of the strip. and eventually, I, uh, Audubon, if there's, if they have conservation, if they put on conservation restrictions on, on, I think they put on a lot of parts of land in this agreement. I don't know the details, but I, it took me by surprise here. And we're busy, like I said, my sister's dying in the hospital and father just passed. So, we're not, we just got word of this this morning. I didn't know this meeting was happening. A neighbor called me to tell me, hey, something's going on here. So. Well, thanks for coming down. I mean, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Don, it sounds, it sounds kosher to you what we're asking? Yeah, but the only problem I have with this, I guess, is that we don't, we don't have the, the owner was listed as Barbara Hank. Yeah, but, yeah, that's me. My name is Barbara Jane. Okay. The yeah. owner of lot one, yeah. To some people, I'm I'm known as Jane. To other people, I'm known as Barbara. It's a long story. <laughs> trust me. So we all it doesn't show subdivision, but um, if this if this if the ownership is wrong in here, it's going to create a problem down the road. There's no sense in doing this. Let's do this address first. If that's, if that's I mean, we we have that's their desire. So we have how many weeks to. How many days to I'm act on this? Well, let's say on the agenda Thursday, I'd say really um, till the next meeting. Okay. So if you if you guys lawyers could just talk this out, if, if there could be some kind of legal document right. uh, shown to us that says, hey, we're not against this, we we had whatever legal language happens to be, let us know that the trust is okay with what is going on here. If you guys could, or you or whatever, show up in the next uh, board meeting in two weeks, then we can accept this as an ANR plan, no problem. I mean, there's, there's, oh, there's no okay, issue so on that. No, there's, there's no, no issue on that. It just, access, right? does that make sense? Or? Yes, all right, so I just need some kind of something. 
I've, I have to have the two lawyers talk to each other. And Unless you want to give us the, the, the okay right now that the land is being transferred. I mean, Joanne, can I put you on the spot? Right, even though it is, they've been on it for 30 years, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. So okay. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's good. He just wanted the information what's, not, uh, what's going on. And, yep. Uh, yeah. All right. Sound fair? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank All you for right. your patience. And All right. What do I have to bring to my attorney? Yeah. I would I bring him the that. plan and let him know what you want to do. And then he could reach out to the other attorney for the estate. Do I need the original? And they would write or, something up. Or this copy? I know, not the original. This, this line. The copy's fine. Well, you, well, copy's you're doing fine. the copy's fine. Ultimately, the copy will have to be this signed and sent to the registry. The question was this is a, is this a recorded law? Ultimately, the plan will have to be signed and sent to the registry of deeds. Oh, okay. So I'll just give him this. Okay. That should be fine. If you want to get the deeds handy, I don't know if you have your deed. And you can get them at, on the website anyway from the Registry of Deeds. Uh, attorneys will know what to do. Yeah. yeah, sure. Or if not, we can just go. July 24th. Yes. Yeah. All right, so moving on to our next item. We have another A in our plan. Well, Maureen O'Connor is the applicant, and the property is located at 187 Oxford Ave. Can you just please step up and sign in, please? This is the wrong one. This is Daniel's. We're on Oxford. We gave you the wrong one. Yep. Sorry. Hold on to those. We'll, we'll Hold on. Beat him next. We'll beat him next. Same shape. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. How you doing? Hi. Yeah, so I'm representing uh, Mr. O'Connell. Um, for his property on Oxford Ave. I work with Burton Engineering. And um, basically, this plan is just an uh, A&R plan. Yep. And we'd like to cut out a lot. From, from the existing, well, it would be about 37 acres, 37 acre parcel. <clears throat> um, this lot has the frontage required by the town, the area. Um, we, have the, we have the appropriate build factor. Um, I don't know if you guys want to know about it. Don, did you collect the fee for this? Is this that is this that lot that was it, it was cleared? Yeah, um, I was out here probably two years ago in the winter. We did some surveying. Um, <clears throat> the owner lives next door. Yeah, there was um, yeah Good. Joanne. I met her, really nice lady. Um, but yeah, we we did a perimeter on the 37 acres in the back, and um, they hired us to subdivide out this one lot. It's yeah. Um, Solar overlay district, you remember that one? Yeah. So the, uh, the acceptance sheet here isn't filled out. So um, do you know if all property taxes have been paid on this one? I checked. It's all set. It's all set? Mm -hmm. the town treasurer last night. All right. I said we're in a res 30 with a solar overlay check. Scale 1 to 40. So you need a waiver for the scale then? Did you have a 1 to, one to 30 plan as opposed to 1 to 40? 
Um, I believe we just did that just so that we could show more detail. Yep. No problem there. <coughs> that was just an easy one. All your butters are on here? So the required frontage is 100 feet. We've got 139. That's correct. Yep. <coughs> no wetlands. No. So people really here. This is I think this is really the inside. Size different scale, so might be 121, might be 130, Alright, so the only waiver we're looking for would be for the uh, scale of the drawing. So 1 to 40 is required. Mm -hmm. They're showing 1 to 30, so we're actually in more detail. Yeah. So once we vote to accept this, we want to approve that waiver as well. Um, by subdividing like this, there's no access to the back 30 whatever acres, right? 35 oh, there, acres? There is, though. There, there is? is. And there's remaining Down the road, there's about, about 430. Yeah, 429 feet, feet remaining. Um, yeah. Up in the upper right-hand corner, we show a little locus. It ah. shows, shows the remaining frontage on Excellent. the lot. Excellent. Yep. The access is for the uh, <coughs> solar farm. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Board, have any questions? Nope. Also, here it is right here. If there aren't any questions, I need a motion to accept the ANR plan at 187 Oxford Road, Dudley Tax Map number 212, parcel number 13. Owner applicant is Oxford Avenue Realty Incorporated, Thomas and Marine O'Connor, and to approve the waiver of the drawing scale. Anybody want to make that motion? Make a motion to approve. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Well, we had discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Good to go? All right, thank you. Nice Thanks. and easy? Thank you. We didn't miss anything, did we, Don? I'm asking a little bit too late. <laughs> we didn't miss anything, did we? No. All right. So we're going to need the Mylar drawing, and we're going to need some drawings and some signatures on that one. We need two, two drawings of signatures, correct, Don? Right, right. Get near that. Um, yeah, with the corner over there. Yeah, we for the signatures. Try not to smear. Yep. Shop in here. Is that, is that a felt tip? So we need two with the uh, original sign, right? We don't need all three. It's a felt tip, right? Sometimes. How's Nancy working out over there? Oh, good. Yeah. I was wondering that, but I didn't see your name. <laughs> yeah, I can just decide. Uh, right, so both of those, no, do you have a signature? Do you sign that? Yeah, I'll, I'll go over there and get it. We need a second copy signed as well, don't we? A paper copy? Two. Two paper copies? You guys can work on that? Yep. Are they marked it later? <laughs> Color matter, don't blue, blue, black, don't matter. Doesn't matter. It's just for their house. Anyway. Thank you, sir. 
Yes, yep. Okay. So Don, what do we keep in here? Just two, two paper copies. And we keep two paper copies? We keep two paper copies and we keep the rest too. As far as this here? Forms, we keep those. <laughs> if anyone wants a copy of it, they certainly can have it. Perfect. We did two signed paper copies or just two copies? Okay, we'll keep the two signed ones is what we, we file one with the clerk and one with us and the rest will. Maybe wants a copy of it. This is a copy something. Officially filed too. Oh, right. yeah. Thank you, think? Good night. You signed in, didn't you? Did you get signed in? Oh, uh, yeah. Excellent. Yep. Appreciate it. Signed in. This is the next one, I think. All right. Moving on to our next item. We have another A&R plan. This is a resubmittal. Nancy Anderson is the applicant. Am applicant. Property located at 7 and 9 Daniel Street. Don, you want to walk us through this one real quick? Yeah, you hear about this one, Joanne? Hey. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know what's going on with this because the the applicant has called me any number of times. When you step, when he, the engineer, the surveyor, I should say, first did the plan about six months or so ago, we found that after we'd done it, that there was, there was actually a paper street called. Um, was it? Platt, Platt Street? It's not Platt Street. It's, um, let's get this. Central Avenue Extension. It showed going through this property. But actually, it doesn't show up in the assessor's maps. It never went to record the registry, as far as we can tell. So Central Matthews, Matt, no, I can't even speak. Central <laughs> Avenue is up in the northwest corner of the plan, and there's supposed to be an extension going through this site? That's what the town meeting article shows. The whole thing, actually. But it was never recorded. Yeah, so it looks like- The plan never got recorded. It's supposed to be an extension going through here. And uh, it's never recorded that it doesn't exist. That's right. We don't think so. Who submitted this? The applicant oh. got a copy of it. This is from the town clerk's office, actually. It's just it's more here. It's a description of the town meeting article, too. It accepted a town meeting, but never went to record the registry, so I guess it doesn't exist. But I was expecting to hear from the applicant or to hear from his surveyor tonight, but they're not here. If they want to make a change to this plan, I don't see any need to it. I mean, it's up to the attorneys and the, the surveyors ultimately what, what they do with this property. They have to certify the titles and so forth. It's a little bit like what happened tonight in the other plan, I guess. You know, we don't, we don't do title certifications or anything like that. If the surveyor shows something on a plan, we take it for record as it, as it is. Oh. If they hadn't just come in tonight and asked about that, we never would have known that there was a do we know if lots sure. 16, 17, and 22 on this plan, are those, are those houses on those lots? Do those lots have frontage to a road to the, to the uh, west that I can't see because the, uh, the locust up here on the right is all washed out? No, there's, um, my niece owns this lot 22, which is right, it's on Daniels and it abuts a property behind it. There's no other. So there's no road over here to the west? Uh, Schofield Ave would be over here, but up, All right. way up, there's probably three, four houses beyond this one. So it's possible, though, this one is front on Schofield Ave? This, this does. That's Battelle Funeral Home. Which one's that one? These two here. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's extensions. Yep, on Schofield yeah. Ave. And there's a couple of houses here that go to the corner. Yeah, these wherever two. Wherever happens to be. These two go up to Schofield. Yeah. And then there's more uh, Daniels that come up, one or two. So the applicant wants to subdivide their property. There's one house and I mean, two houses in one lot. They want to put one on each, 
I use a lot. That's that's yeah, there's, there's two existing. You, four you can do families. that. You can do that under a sub under an A and R plan. It's not a subdivision. If the lots were there before the subdivision control went into effect, which is the case. That is but a, the frontage is, is not there, right? It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Does it matter because they're pre-existing? Because pre the pre-existing. Oh, they're pre-existing pre houses. Pre-existing subdivision yeah. control. What's right. right. the They're two apartment buildings. Uh, one's a single family. One's a four family or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's two houses on one deed, and they're looking to split it up. Yeah, that's essentially what they want to do. I guess to sell it separately. So, so if everything is existing. And if the central lab extension hasn't been filed at all, even if it has been filed, that means there's a house where it's supposed to be. I mean, he accepted it, but it's never been filed. So do we? So we can accept this plan pretty much without a second thought. In my I opinion. don't. I don't know what where the applicant was. You know what he's planning to do because the surveyor was supposed to come in tonight. What, what, to me, it looks like the applicant wants to subdivide the land. They've submitted this plan, right? Right. So what does the surveyor have to do with that? Well, let's, let's say the surveyor certifies what's actually there. The surveyor certifies the deed, you know, you know shapes, shapes the lot, and whatever. Gets the information from the deed, the, what needs and bounds are located in the lot, and the measurements and so forth, and establishes You're saying the plan's not accurate, and the yeah, surveyor I, I, has to come in and show that, that that's accurate? If he hadn't brought up that vote of 1948 to accept this, um, Central Avenue extension. I don't think anybody would have ever known. I never had this happen before, ever. Is this more of a zoning issue where it's not? It's not really a zoning issue either, unless it becomes a zoning issue. He's, like he's, he's trying to create a separately. If, if they put on addition or something, it might become a zoning issue. But that's oh, where he's trying to split it to make new, make a non-conforming lot more non-conforming. It's, it's not an issue with us. Then the issue before us is if it has access, and it was there before subdivision control went into effect, so consequently it has the same access. It just well, has access on Daniel Street. Yeah. I don't see an issue with it. I don't understand what Central Lab Extension has to do anything. I don't understand what a surveyor has to do anything. We have a plan in front of us that has been stamped and tested by a professional. So if the plan is not accurate, then it's going to fall back on Mr. Byron J. Andrews, as far as I can tell, who's already certified that the plan is accurate, correct? Correct. So, I mean, was, it sort of, was, it, was the surveyor going to come and give us any additional information that we need before we approve this or, or accept this? They wanted to check into uh, Central Lab Extension. But there is no Central Lab Extension. There's, there's no Central Lab Extension, even though it was accepted by town media. It's not recorded at the registry. So, right, so then, it's does, then it's, that's not relevant, then, is it, if it doesn't exist? My guest thought, agree or? Right, so, I, 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 just so I understand. Uh, so we can, essentially, if we approve this, we technically create two non-conforming lots, but you have because to the houses are you have already there. You have to there, approve it under case law and et cetera. If there was nothing on the property, yeah. then it'd be different. a different story. Okay. Right. Then we can go on frontage. But since there are already two, two buildings there. Are, two buildings in one lot, you can divide the lot so that each building is on a separate lot. Okay. All right. Period. Okay. Doesn't say anything about zoning. Right. That was the question. If they go to build an extension or something like that, it may be maybe an issue, but that's yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I this is act of subdivision control. It's nothing to do with zoning. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. Sometimes it doesn't, but that's what <laughs> what's the board's pleasure says. on this one? I don't see why uh, we need to talk to the uh, anybody else. Seems good to me. And yeah, then, if it's the board's pleasure, um, we just have to check the waivers here with them real quick. That's a good question. So, looking for three waivers: existing grades. It's pretty much flat out there, if I recall correctly. Yeah. It's not changing anyway. Yeah, wetlands. There's nothing there. No wetlands. It's just it's just nice having a plant as needed. And then the contour of the intervals. There's no topography shown. So, we're looking for. A motion to accept the ANR plan on 7 or 9 Daniel Street. Registry of Deeds Book 4416, page 517. There's no tax plate on here before the days. All right, we're good. Uh, the owner, Nancy Anderson, with the waivers of 
topography, contour intervals, profile of the existing grade, and location of wetlands. Does anybody make that motion? I'll make a motion that we accept the A&R plan for 7-9 Daniel Street with the uh, waivers as read. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Plan accepted. Same signature routine. Uh, Don, while we're going through the signatures, you want to give us an update on the different subdivisions? Oh, really nothing, at, no, no action particularly. No action on any of them? No, it's a pier pond. I went through there yesterday and they, they have installed the grass strips, so. I think the next thing they probably, probably need for a reduction, I would think that when he's done with the as built plans, he's ready to file those streets that are built to date for town meeting. Um, and the other thing, we haven't heard any more. <laughs> the other thing being the uh, yeah, okay. the Old Mason Road, whatever what? Is. Old Mason Road or whatever that is. The other thing, have you heard anything on that? Okay. You did? Yeah. Yeah, that little handout I, I gave you to was clipped again. Together. Final inspections associated with site plans, including the AMP solar done. Item H, anything there? No more on there. They still have lands final landscaping to finish. All right, there is no public hearing. Anything on the uh, discussion, the status of the economic development planning? Item I. The EDC took a took a summer, summer, summer break last month, so they didn't, they didn't meet they didn't have a meeting on upcoming Tuesday. We'll find, we'll find out we'll more We'll probably be back next month with some action I'm there. I'm trying to uh, see if we can get yes. CMRPC together to uh, work on that, you know, to discuss the status of the work on that um, Dudley Webster project yeah, for the main streets. Did we miss this one here? Someone missed that one? That's me. I did not sign. So that's ongoing. The deadline on that project is June 30th. This is several other projects. Okay. This, this, uh, now the planners plate. I met this morning with, and this afternoon with uh, 
There's a couple of entities. One being the, uh, the um, engineer is doing the stormwater management plan for the town. Okay. We're right on schedule with that so far. And the, uh, this is the uh, work plan for the next five years or so on stormwater. We're now in compliance date. And uh, it all ties into to possibly funding that's going to be available at some point in time. That's where the MVP grant comes in. That's basically a plan for seeking funding. That's what it amounts to. And it's based on some, some natural existing hazards, you know, dam, dam problems and um, drainage issues and things of that type. We may be able to sort of mesh all this in together. We haven't. We can do that. Met with the town administrator and the uh, highway folks and okay. these, these two things. So hopefully we can get it all to work together. That's what the MVP grant is all about. So tying it all together. All right. And we haven't heard of the community development block grant either. We haven't heard it yet. They're very late this year. So okay. We'll be here soon. We get that, and that ties it all in as well because that's um, more or less a total infrastructure plan with um, recommendations for funding and so forth for what they call the Jericho neighborhood and this neighborhood right around we are over here but around um, sort of on the, the end this end of uh, Scofield Lab. Okay. All right all good news. Comments from the planning board? That's all good? All good. All right. I guess I'll give a quick shout out to Russ for agreeing to be our associate. We appreciate it. Yep. Audience has left us. We're good there. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Any vouchers? Anything we need to approve? No. We're good there. All right. Meeting to adjourn. Anybody? Please came in, but I just, this is afternoon. I didn't have time to do that, so we'll do it next time. I make a motion. We adjourn. Second. A second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Opposed? Nobody? We're good. See you guys in two weeks. Thank you.